should be here. Ladies and gentlemen, Vincent Karamans. Yes. Well, thanks, Nick. I never had that before. It was great. So, guys, hello. My name is Vincent. Um, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Um, it's a line from a Kelly Clarkson song. I'm not sure if there are fans in the, in the room. Uh, but I thought it would make a great title to my presentation as well. Um, I'm going to tell you today something about, that might so about something that might not sound very inspiring at first sight. But actually, I think, is very inspiring and also very important. Let me get this thing. And that's failure. Making mistakes. And when I told my girlfriend a couple of weeks ago that I was invited to speak at campus party and I was really excited about it, and I was going to hold a talk on failure or making mistakes, she said, well, you're very good at that, so that will probably go well. And yes, I've made my fair share of mistakes, and I'll come to talk about them, but I'll also try to explain to you how making mistakes, how failure is the key to successful entrepreneurship. And not only entrepreneurship, also your studies, your education, your career, and even your personal life. So I'd like to uh, start with a little experiment. You all know what this is, right? You're all smart and students and, and young people. You've all seen one of these before. It's an optical illusion. So my question to you now is, which line is longer? And please let me know, shout out, yell it out. Which line is longer? Same, 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 right? So most people say it's the same, right? And, and that's what you're trained to believe because it's an optical illusion. I must trick you because one line looks longer, but it, right? It seems like, it seems like one line is longer, but you know it's an optical illusion. You know I'm tricking you, so they must be the same. Well, you're wrong. I changed it, right? So, if you were just one of the people shouting out the same just now, you probably feel a bit foolish, a bit stupid. Because the guy next to you, who thought it, but didn't say it, is now just chilling, right? He's just pretending that he was right and he knew it all along. I saw the guy with the pencil and he was probably saying like, yeah, I knew, I knew, I knew they were the same. And that's, and, and that's the thing with failure. It makes you feel stupid. It makes you look stupid. And that's why we want to avoid it. Let me give you an example. Um, I have a lot of friends with business ideas. And they always come to me with their business idea because they think I'm an entrepreneur. Or I, well, they're right in that. I am an entrepreneur. But they think I can assess well whether or not their business idea is worth pursuing. And they're all very enthusiastic about it. And I can tell you, well, those are a lot of pixels, by the way. Um, I can tell you that most of their ideas are great, but actually very few of my friends pursue those business ideas. And few of them dare to admit it, but the main reason for them to do that is the fear of failure. They're afraid to fail. The Global Entrepreneurship Monitor, which is um, a basically a, a, a global research institute re uh, uh, that does research into entrepreneurship, actually researches every year to what extent people with a business idea are being held back due to the fear of failure. And the results might not surprise you that in America, the people are most fearless. And in, in Italy, over almost 60% of all people that have a business idea don't pursue it because they're afraid to fail. Might have something to do with ego, I don't know. The thing is, we're doing pretty well in the Netherlands. Roughly a third of the people with a business idea don't pursue it because they're afraid to fail. Only the United States, Finland, and Slovenia perform better in this fearlessness of failure figure, FFF. But if you think about it, one third, that's not just one, one in three business ideas that are not being pursued because people are afraid to fail. It's not because they think they're bad ideas, it's because they're afraid to fail. It's not just business ideas, it's innovation being lost. It's jobs not being created. 
it's YouTube's Airbnb, Facebook, and Uber. One of these three are not, is not being created because of the fear of failure. And it's questions like, what will my friends think if I fail? Will they think of me as a loser if I fail? What will my family think if I fail? How agonizing will the feeling of regret be when I fail? These are all the questions that spin in these people's heads when they consider becoming an entrepreneur or not. And you know what? I completely understand that. Because when I started out with my own business, I asked myself, I saw of myself the very same question. So let's go back a bit in time. It was five years ago in 2011, and uh, I was studying in Rotterdam at Erasmus University. I was doing uh, a double degree in economics and law, and I just finished a year of chairmaning the biggest student association in Rotterdam. And with, well, you, that might probably sound familiar. I was a student back at the time, um, but as with all students, I had no cash. And basically, and basically that year of, of, of doing that board of the student association basically made me bankrupt. So I took a job as, um, as a talent scout at a recruitment agency. And all I had to do was introduce, recruit high potential students to the talent pool of that recruitment agency. And I would get 100 euros for every student that I would introduce, and even an additional 200 euros if, I would, if that student would be hired by one of their roughly 15 to 20 clients. So, well, I did pretty well. I made about 6,000 euros within nine months. And I don't have to tell you how much money that is for a student, right? So I thought I was making a lot of money. I had the best job ever. I didn't have to do a lot, and I made a lot of money. Sounds like the perfect student job, right? You know, students are lazy and have no money. So that's th that worked very well for me. Until I discovered what the business model of that recruitment agency was. They were making 15,000 euros for every hire, for every student that they uh, introduced at our, one of their clients and got hired. So I started thinking. I started calculating. But this isn't the beginning of the story where I started out my own recruitment agency. I actually did the opposite. I thought, if it costs 15,000 euros to hire someone, no wonder that recruitment agency has only 15 to 20 clients. But if you look at it from a student perspective, if there are hundreds, potentially thousands of graduate employers out there, how big, are the, how big is the chance that your perfect job your dream job lies with one of these 15 to 20 clients of that recruitment agency. Well, I don't have to tell you, those chances are pretty slim. And I discovered the same thing with career fairs, career websites, career guides. They were all very expensive and so only included like the 50, 60 biggest graduate employers in the Netherlands, everywhere. But the startups, the small law firms that offer great opportunities for graduates weren't among one of those. And so as a student, you were missing out on those opportunities. And I wanted to change that. And that's how the idea of Magnet Me was started. So what I did, I reached out to a friend of, me, a friend of mine who studied in Delft, Freek. In English, his name is Freek, which is often, often provides a problem since we just expanded to the United Kingdom. But um, uh, I, I sent an email to him and said, well, I have this great business idea. I want to talk to you uh, about it. And uh, he decided, he agreed to meet up. And we uh, went to one of the classrooms of the Erasmus University. I drew out the entire concept on a chalkboard. And within 10 minutes, he agreed to partner up with me. So at that point, we had just doubled in team size. We had a great idea. We had a great vision. The only thing we needed was a website. But there was only one problem. We couldn't code. So what we did, we got behind my laptop and Googled, as you do, website development companies in Rotterdam. Send out a few emails. Most of them never got back to us. Met up with a few of them and actually chose one website development company to partner up with. And the deal was they would get shares in our company if they would develop our website. So, and that's how we started out. We, you know, we were very happy and all th it started out all well. We drank champagne when we founded the company and they would deliver, they promised to deliver the website in December 2011. 
and we started getting companies on board. That went all very well. So in December 2011, the guy came to us and said, the website is not finished. And we were like, we were so stressed. We were so worried that someone else would steal our concept and would overtake us and would do, you know, and bring our beautiful, brilliant concept into the market before we would. And then he said to us, well, you know, you only bring in shares and I can't pay my people with shares. And other clients bring in money, so they have a priority over you. Okay. So he promised to, um, to deliver the, the website in March 2012. Didn't happen. May didn't happen. June didn't happen. And eventually we launched with a very crappy version of the website in September 2012. Going to a website development company for building our core, our website, was a huge mistake and felt like failure. But I learned some very, very valuable lessons out of that. First of all, never be, well actually first of all, if you're a tech startup or at least aspiring to be, never outsource your core for any business. Our website, our product was our core, never outsource it. That's, well, we never did that ever again. Second, never be so dependent of anything or anyone for something so important so much. And third, always get your options together. We instantly got behind my laptop to Google a website development company because that was the thir first thing that sprung into our head. If I would have taken the time to speak to people who already did this, to, to do a bit of research, to get my options together, I probably would have ma wouldn't have made this decision. So, although we made that mistake, it gave us some very valuable lessons, which we now use to make decisions, um, uh, make decisions in in, in Magnet Me, and 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 as I said, we're now expanding to the United Kingdom. So that thing didn't kill us, that decision, luckily. So it made us stronger, and luckily we now have um, a team of about 15 software engineers that are working every day very hard to make a great product. Um, uh, in our office in Rotterdam. So eventually it all turned out well. And of course, I'm not gonna tell you that making mistakes is only making mistakes is the key to successful entrepreneurship because if you only make mistakes, well, naturally as an entrepreneur, you end up out of business, you end up bankrupt, right? But it's about the right attitude towards mistakes. First of all, you should be willing to make mistakes. At Magna Me, we have four, five uh, core values and I cherish them like children, and one of them, which I particularly like, is don't be a chicken. We want everyone at Magnet Me to experiment, to go out there, to get into the unknown, to fail. Who cares? I'm not gonna give them shit if they fail. I actually encourage my people to fail, to experiment, go out there, see what happens. But very important follow-up is you have to learn. That's one of our other core values, it's keep on learning. Not only from your mistakes, well that's very important, but just in general, and learning from your mistakes can, given, uh, can even go as far as writing down on a piece of paper everything you did, every element you did, and circling in red what you could have done better, what was a mistake, and how you're gonna do that next time, how you're gonna do that better next time. So. Failing is very important because it's the best teacher there is. I've, I wouldn't have learned the things that I've learned now if I hadn't made one of, well, that mistake and I made multiple others. I wouldn't have been, and we wouldn't have been with Meg and me, not at the stage where we are now. Uh, but I'll tell you another reason why failing is important. Do you know this guy? That's probably a stupid question. This is, because I didn't know him either until a couple of, a couple of, couple of days ago, this is Spencer Silver. And Spencer, he worked at 3M in 19, uh, 1970, so that's 46 years ago. He probably looked a, look a lot younger than, uh, than on this picture. He was a scientist at 3M. And 3M, for your information, they made, at the time they made glues. For a, a fancy word is adhesives. And Spencer's job was to create a glue that was even stronger than any of the other glues they already had. 
So Spencer worked months and months and months with his team on creating this perfect, very strong glue. But in the end, he, he came up with a glue that was even weaker than any other product they had. Spencer failed. Utter failure. End of story. But not really. Because three years later, one of his colleagues was looking for to put bookmarks in his music book, but he didn't want them to fall out, but he also didn't want those bookmarks to damage the pages. So he thought of Spencer's failure, and he coated his bookmarks with Spencer's glue, and so accidentally invented something that you're all using every day, especially when you're studying the post-it. So next time you see this thing, think of failure and how it can help you. Because a failed attempt, can, well, to, to one problem, can be the solution to another problem. And if you don't think of a mistake as a mistake, but as an opportunity to ask yourself, to which question is this the right answer? You'll be, you'll be amazed how that opens up your world, how that opens up the possibilities you can think of. So, I want to... I want to do another optical uh, illusion. Which line, which line is longer? Look, it's the very same thing, but it's the, the difference is you're a lot quieter now. Because I told you the last time that you failed, and you want to avoid the feeling of failure. But that's the wrong attitude. You should always be willing to shout something out, even if you're wrong. Who cares what the guy next to you thinks? Who cares what your family thinks? Who cares what your friends, your boyfriend, your girlfriend thinks? You will fail unless you fail. In your career, in your education, in entrepreneurship, period. And I want to back this up with a couple of quotes, really unoriginal, to back up my story. So first of all, Thomas Edison. He invented the light bulb. He tried 10,000 times. And after doing so, and after being you know, asked about his failure, I, he said, I've not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Second one, Samuel Beckett, great playwright, made his career on failure. James Joyce, one of the most successful English, or well, uh, he's an Irish writer, but a writer in English literature. Hi a man of genius makes no mistakes. His errors are volitional and are the portals of discovery. You all know this, or you know, you know Winston Churchill. Success is the ability to go from one failure to another with no loss of enthusiasm. That's it, never give up. And the most important one of the most inspiring person in this list, remember, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Go make mistakes, never give up, and you'll succeed. Thank you very much. We can do questions, right, if there are questions. If there are any questions? Yeah. Yeah. The other three. Be open. Be open. Remember who it's all for. And own that shit. So we want people to take ownership. And they're all on, on the wall of our office with, uh, with, uh, with the nice icons. Any other questions? No? Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your time.